It's Thursday, May 12, 2022. I'm Todd Dunn, and today I'm at the Wonderland Trail. It's about 9 o'clock in the morning and a bit over 60 degrees already, and it's actually quite warm in the sun. So we're going to walk out this trail, which goes out to the beach, and I'll talk a little bit about the history of this part of Acadia National Park as we walk the trail. Okay, we're at the beginning of the Wonderland Trail here in Acadia National Park. This is on the southwest uh, part of Mount Desert Island. And uh, this is an interesting area historically. Uh, this was uh, homesteaded back in the 1800s. And there were several homes out here. And... Uh, this part of Acadia National Park, which is the southern tip of the island, was added to the park starting in 1930 when uh, the Navy, which had a radio station over in the seawall area, closed its radio station and the land was transferred to Acadia National Park. And that is the area that during the 30s became the seawall campground at least uh, part of the seawall campground. A loop, B loop, and C loop, which is the RV loop, were all built in the 30s. Uh, and then D loop was added in the 50s. And D loop is the walk-in tent camping area because there was a square of land there that was retained by the landowners that the Navy bought the land from in 1919 and they kept it until the 50s. Now other parts of this area of Acadia National Park over at the Bass Harbor Lighthouse and over to Ship Harbor were added to the park in about 1938. And I do not know when the Ship Harbor Trail was built. And, but this area, the Wonderland Trail, is in a triangle of land that included the point that Wonderland is on, it was not added to the park till sometime in the 60s. Back in the 30s, late 30s, John D. Rockefeller acquired this land, but there were several, uh, houses still on the land and from what I can tell from reading uh, Rockefeller probably uh, allowed the people to stay in their houses uh, until they died or decided to move on and that didn't happen until sometime in the 60s I haven't been able to find exactly when this land was transferred to the park but if you look at uh, an Acadia National Park map from 1960, this area where the Wonderland Trail was, was not part of the park. And then if you look at a 1970 map, it was. So, sometime in the 60s, this block of land where the Wonderland Trail is located was finally added to Acadia National Park. The Wonderland Trail itself is an old road as you can tell here, we're about a quarter mile in, uh, quite wide. It does narrow down as we get further in, but uh, it is always a relatively wide trail, although it is uh, a little rocky in places, for example, right up here. And uh, so it is not you know, accessible to say someone in a wheelchair. See the rocks? Basically these rocks are frost heaved up in the spring and every year there are new ones and they stick up a little bit further. So, but this is an easy trail. It has maybe 40 feet of total elevation gain. Uh, and is generally easy walking. 
it's a loop trail or an out and back trail and takes if you walked it briskly oh 20 minutes maybe but normally if you walk a little more slowly spend a little time enjoying the scenery and uh, the ocean which is where this goes uh, it is probably more like an hour's walk about halfway out the trail you come to these uh, stone pavements these are areas where the glaciation that swept over Mount Desert Island about 10,000 years ago scraped all the topsoil off and just left bedrock exposed and there are a fairly large area of these and the vegetation is mostly these small pine trees that have grown up through cracks in the stone. Now here's an example of one of the little pine trees and you can see that the growth conditions out here are a little harsh. This uh, looks more like a bit of uh, Japanese gardening than a natural pine tree. Hey, here we are walking across the stone pavements. The Park Service has uh, put up barriers to keep you on the trail because these stone pavements have uh, lichens on them and those lichens can be damaged by walking on them and they are in some cases hundreds or even as much as a thousand years old in fact uh, people studying recent uh, past events can use lichens on stones uh, where they've been undisturbed to determine the age of the outcrop at least the surface exposure of it so uh, that's called lichenometry so it's and there's some pretty sort of gnarly looking trees here that have grown up through as i said cracks in the stone and from the stone pavements we descend this is kind of the high point on the trail so we descend down to sea level and as i said this is a nice easy walking trail although you do have to watch out for roots and rocks that stick up so you know if you're looking off into the forest you could trip over a rock This stretch right here is probably the roughest part of the trail where there are, are rocks sticking up and and it's descending and there are you know roots like this one and little steps you have to step down. They're not very big though, maybe six inches. And if we look off the trail, you can see the pine trees, small pine trees extend quite a ways. And that shows the extent of stone pavement over off of the trail. Oh, a very pleasant morning walk, although it is surprisingly hot out here, particularly when you're in the sun. It, it's got to be almost 65 here. And to a main resident in the spring, this is... Uh, on the verge of being unbearably hot. As a matter of fact, I'm actually a little bit sweaty from the heat. And here's the trail as it continues to descend down towards sea level. Now when we get out here to the end of this point, and this is a point that uh, is kind of triangular in shape, the point narrows down to a small isthmus maybe a little over a hundred feet wide and then expands out into a round end of the trail that is much wider and the trail which is an out and back trail loops around the uh, round end of the isthmus. Oh, two or three minutes after you pass the stone pavements we have you descend down to sea level and you can see the ocean through the trees and I can hear 
the surf. And there are a couple paths here. This is the narrow isthmus part of the trail. And there are a couple paths that go out to the beach. And over here, we have a rarity for Maine, a sandy beach. As you'll see in a second. There it is. And we're looking now across toward Gotts Island. And on the other side of the point over there is where the Ship Harbor Trail comes out. And the lighthouse is about half a mile away in the direction we're looking. And up there, at the head of this little cove, is a natural seawall. And there is a little pond behind that seawall. Okay, let's continue out the path to the end of the point. 40, 50 yards after we pass the first uh, path down to the beach, we come to the narrow point of this uh, point at Wonderland. And you can see it's only a little over 100 feet wide here. And then the land broadens out and we are going to very quickly come to the loop trail at the end of the point. And this is a loop. It's only a few hundred yards. You can go either way. So, there's the right hand side of the loop and the left hand side of the loop which goes across the point and then around. But we'll go counterclockwise. And now that we're out by the ocean, the wind off the water has made it much more comfortable. It's probably not much over 50 degrees out here instead of the stifling 60 plus a little bit inland. As we walk around this loop, there are a number of paths that lead out to the water. There's one. And we'll go out one a little further up. Now the beaches here are more typical for the coast of Maine, at least this part of the coast of Maine, in that they are rock. And now if you come here at high tide, there won't be much beach, but anytime, oh, more than two hours away from high tide on either side, you'll have a reasonable amount of beach to walk. Although, it is rocky, and it might be a little bit rough going in places. And here we come. The rocky beach. I'm just going to step out here because there's an interesting sight for people not from around here. Yep, right out there is a lobster boat setting a trap. And uh, they'll put the trap over the side pretty soon and head out of there. That's a very tight little area. And it's probably about two hours from high right now. And he probably wouldn't want to go in there at low tide. It's pretty shallow. And if it was rough. And there he goes. And he's got a big load of traps on the boat. And he's headed in, probably set another trap a little closer in in this area. Now, if you're coming up here on your boat, I would not recommend going in where that lobster boat is. It's quite shallow in there, and there are quite a few rocks. 
and it's probably uh, a good idea not to go in there unless you have lots of local knowledge. Yeah. Past the lobster boat in the distance are the Duck Islands. And here we are out on the typical rocky beach. And you can see there's that same lobster boat. He went across the ledge, which extends out there quite a ways. Not something I would do in my boat. <laughs> and when the tide is out, you can almost walk over to the little rocky islet right there. And in the distance, we see Great Cranberry Island. The next point over is the Wonderland or Seawall Picnic Area. And then the hills of Mount Desert Island in the distance. So it's a typical nice beach. You can come out here and uh, have a picnic on the beach. And unless the wind is off the land, it's always nice and cool out here because the water, even in August, never gets much above about 60 degrees. And here, for those who might be interested, is a lobster trap, which has broken loose from its and been washed up during a storm. These are, you find these fairly commonly on the beach here in Maine because there are literally uh, in the season thousands of traps set here. And this trap has several compartments uh, down there. That little ring is where the lobsters come in and there will be uh, bags of bait and over here on the right hand end is a uh, an escape port for smaller lobsters to leave. So if the lobster is small enough to get out that port, uh, it is not uh, big enough to keep. Okay. And another look out over the ocean. Beautiful day out on the water here at the southern tip of Mount Desert Island. And this area over here dries completely at low tide. You can walk out there. Although it is a little muddy in places. And here we are. Now the rocks here are uh, mostly silicic volcanics. That's what these are right here. They're not granite on this part of the island. And there is, right here, a little basaltic dike that comes through the silicic volcanics. That's what the darker colored rock is. I included that today because I got asked to say a little bit about the geology of the area uh, on a recent video. The beach out here, where it isn't big rocks, consists of what, at first glance, look like small pebbles. But I'm going to take a handful of them up here. And as you can see, I did get a couple pebbles, but mostly the beach is small snail shells. So, a nice little shell beach, and over time, where people have walked, the shells have gotten broken up into a sort of shell sand. So that pretty much ends this video. I just thought I'd show you the Wonderland Trail here at in Acadia National Park on the 12th of May 2022 on a rather warm and almost sweltering 60 plus degree spring day. If you enjoyed the video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't, why don't you think about subscribing to my channel to see more content like this. Thanks for watching.